Matthew 12, we're looking at verses 38 through 41. Because this is what we celebrate on Easter, or for us, the resurrection. Some of the scribes and the Pharisees answered him. He's been in a discourse with them through this chapter. The scribes and the Pharisees answered him, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. He answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign. I want you to pay attention to that because the church should not be into signs, and yet you hear so much preaching based on signs today. An evil and adulterous generation craves for a sign, and yet no sign shall be given to it but the sign of Jonah the prophet. Then he quotes <clears throat> to prove, he had, this is his proof text. Just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. It's a reference to his burial. The men of Nineveh, Here's a statement, a declaration of judgment upon this group of people that have just asked him this question, along with a whole generation. The men and end of us shall stand up with this generation at the judgment and shall condemn it, they will set as judges, and will condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and behold, something greater than Jonah is here. That's where we're going today. The miraculous sign of Easter is the resurrection of Christ. And um, you either believe it or you don't believe it. And so that's a big issue. But there are a lot of details connected with this that we'll discuss today after a word of prayer. Let us pray. I give you a moment of silence as a believer priest. Classroom etiquette is to be sure there is no unconfessed sin in your life in order that the Holy Spirit can minister the truth of the Word of God to your soul. You made the effort to get here. Make the effort through your priesthood to listen to the, the Word of God and the ministry of the Holy Spirit as he applies this scripture both in teaching and correcting, rebuking, training. Whatever is going to go on is going to go on because you're positive of the Word of God. How do I know if I'm spiritual? There could be no unconfessed sin in your life. It, you should look at uh, mental attitude sins, sins of the tongue and overt sins, and make these confessions where necessary. 1 John 1, 9, a, a proof text says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we expect that both from our congregation that visits every every Sunday with us, as well as those who are visiting with us from the internet. We call it classroom etiquette. It is vitally important to your life. Our Father, we thank you today <clears throat> that we've come to church because it's the opportunity to assemble together, not just because it's Easter, but because it's a, another opportunity to identify yourself with a body of believers within a nation <clears throat> awaiting the return of Christ. I pray today, Father, as we look at, he, Jesus said, no other sign will be given to you from this day out, no other sign of importance to you except my resurrection. And when you see that sign of the resurrection, you will know that I'm the Messiah. I am the Savior of the world. <clears throat> I mean, boy, is that a heads up. You want a sign? I'm going to give you one. And it won't be long. And when you see it, it, it will occur. When you see it, you will know. I wonder how many of the people in that sermon that day said, well, I'll see if that's true. And when they saw that it was true, believed that he was the Savior of the world. I pray that upon our life today and our congregation, wherever they are, in Jesus' name, amen. 
<clears throat> One of the things that disturbs me every Easter is that I hear commentators and pastors, at least on the internet and radio, keep talking about a Good Friday. And it just drives me nuts. <clears throat> there is no such thing as a Good Friday. There's a good Monday and a good Tuesday and a good Wednesday. If you're talking about good, then it's a Romans 8, 28 week. But this idea that Jesus died on Friday, was buried on Saturday, and rose on Sunday is absolutely malarkey. There's nothing more true to that than anything. And you need to know why that's not true. You need to know because there's probably nothing more clear in the evidence in the Word of God then Jesus did not die on Friday, was buried and raised on. We know he was raised, uh, he was out of the tomb on Sunday. We know that for sure. Jesus told them exactly. They wanted a sign. He said, I'm going to give you a sign. I'm going to give it, make it very clear to you. I'm going to be, I'm going to die. I'm going to be in the grave three days and three nights. And when I'm raised from the day, dead, that will be my proof. It comes from, it comes from Jonah 117. For example, in Matthew, the 12th chapter, if you'll go back and look at that, you're probably still there. If you go back and look at verse 40, he quotes that. If you have a study Bible, you know we're, he's quoting Jonah 117. For just as, and so he uses Jonah 117 as a proof text. He uses it as proof text. Now pay attention to this. Are you with me? Listen, he says in verse 40, just as, hold, hold, hold your thought there, so. You see, just as and so, that's, that's, a, that's a way you make comparative of one thing to another that when this occurs, it's, kind of like, it's kind of like a first-class condition. It's different, but a different formula, but it has the same idea. It's comparative, just as so. Now, you understand that, don't you? Just as so. But just as this goes, so does that. Now, watch what he says. Just as Jonah, here's his proof text, Jonah 117. Just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the sea monster. See, that's Jonah 117. Here's Matthew 1240. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The heart of the earth. <clears throat> you understand that? He's talking about burial. He's not, a talk about, he's not talking about Jonah up here on top of the uh, sea in a boat. He's talking about Jonah that's been thrown over, had seaweed wrapped around his head, and was as good as dead when this sea monster came along and picked him up and put him inside a tomb and spit him out three days and three nights later. You say to me, well, who's counting? Jonah. I mean, he's marking on the side of the fish somewhere. Right? You know, people, when they get stranded somewhere on an island, they get in a cave, they start marking, right? The sun goes down, the sun comes up, they mark it. And so people all the time say to me, Ron, what's it matter? I'll tell you why it matters. Let me tell you why. I, I wrote three things on your paper why it matters. It should matter to you. Oh, people, snow wall. Listen, if they can get you in error in the word of God, they can push you all over the place. There's three reasons why it bothers me. It matters to me because it's the gospel. Christ dies three days, laid, buried three days and raised. That's the gospel. Dies on a cross, is buried and raised from the dead. It matters to me because the burial is part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If there's, if there's no death, there's no burial. If there's no burial, there's no resurrection. If you want more information on that subject, you should read 1 Corinthians 15. Now, it's a little lengthy, so, you know, you can actually eat a sandwich and come back to it, but you should read that. It matters to me because it should be based on scriptural truth. Some guy shouldn't stand up and say he, he, 
this is Good Friday, Good Friday, Good Friday, Good Friday, and not have any evidence in the scripture that that's true. Now, we've been in fake news for ever since I've been in Christianity. They've been saying this stuff ever since I came in. And that's not true. Now, a guy like me, before I came into Christianity, if you were quoting me the Bible and I read the simple Bible and it didn't make sense, I wouldn't trust you anymore. That was me. That's phony baloney stuff. It matters to me because it mattered to Jesus. It should matter to you because it mattered to him. They said, show me a sign. He lays it out. Here's Jonah 117, and here's Matthew. Listen, here's Matthew 1240. Did he not do that? Just as so. Did he not do that? As Jonah, as Jonah, so, just as Jonah, just as Jonah was three days and three nights. That's not part of a day. <laughs> Well, book a room at a hotel. That's not a, he, but Jesus, he could have said a day. He said to make it complete, not part. So you wouldn't under, misunderstand. He made a complete day. Three days and three nights. Not part, three. Now that's important. Why does it matter why does it matter, Ron? Why does it matter? Because it's not true. The Bible tells you it's not true, and it mattered to Jesus. Did it matter to him? He went into detail. So is Jonah. Just as Jonah, so shall the Son of Man. So it's a big deal. Listen, if there's no resurrection, you said, well, Ron, I don't dispute that there's a resurrection. Okay. Our dispute apparently is when he died and when he was buried. But I know we have to count back three days from when he was raised. <laughs> Listen, and it's so clear in the word of God. Now, Here's what people often do with me. People quote Matthew 16, 21, where it says on the third day. Then they quote Matthew 17, 23 to me. They were trying to correct me. And it says on the third day. Then they quote Ma Matthew 20, uh, 20, uh, should be, it should be 20, 19. And it says on the third day, and they say, see, it says on the third day. Well, I don't dispute the Bible says on the third day. Listen to me. If you want a proof text for chapter 16, 17, and 20, you know where you go? Matthew 12. Now, which came first? The chicken or the egg? I mean, which came first? Does Matthew 12 come before 16, 17, and 20? Of course it does. And did Jesus not lay it out just on the way it should be laid out? Did he not lay it out? At just as Jonah was three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be three days. Did he go back and state it? He didn't say, well, just as Jonah was three days, uh, the Son of Man, you know, he'll be raised from the dead. He didn't say that. He went back and laid out the three days and the three nights specifically. Did he not do that? See, I'm, not, I'm just trying to tell you what the Bible says. <clears throat> Doesn't make me smarter than anybody. Makes me smarter than those who says he died on Friday, was buried on Sunday, and raised on, uh, buried on Saturday and raised on Sunday. Because it's not scriptural. So, Listen, when, when people quote Matthew 16 on the third day, on the third day, on the third day, yes. Do we have a proof text for it? Yes. Matthew 1240, does, did Jesus have a proof text for three days and three nights? Yeah, Jonah 117. 
That was Jesus' go-to passage. That's a big deal. You say to me, why do you make such a big deal out of it? Because it's a big deal? I make a big deal out of it because Jesus made a big deal out of it. Did Jesus make a big deal out of it? That's a big deal. It is a big deal. You see, what people miss is the exact teaching of Jesus on the third day. The third day. Matthew establishes his proof, his proof text and Jesus' proof text. That's important. Not only that, but where did Jesus go? Well, for the average person, he just went to the tomb and hung out. You know, had pizza ordered or something. They brought it in and, you know, I just... They, where did he go and what did he do for three days? Now, that's not my subject today. Mine is just let's get it correct. But where did he go? Well, Matthew, Jesus said in Matthew, the 12th chapter, uh, he said in verse 40, he said he went to the heart of the earth. Now, we know where the earth is. And the heart of it would be somewhere in the middle. And when people in the Old Testament died, they went to Sheol. They went to the heart of the earth. And the heart and is Sheol in the heart of the earth had three had three different departments for people. There was paradise where the believer went before the resurrection of Christ. They went to torment. That's where the unbeliever went, still does. And there was a place uh, uh, for the fallen angels of Genesis 6. They are still there. They'll be released in the tribulation. You say, how do you know all that? Well, Psalms, the 16th chapter, verse 10, we're talking about the resurrection of Christ and talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. He talks about that. And he, says, he says that he was going to go to Sheol. Do not leave my soul in Sheol. The, listen, he went there. The only per, you know what raised Jesus from the dead? You know who raised Jesus from the dead? You say God. No, God, the Holy Spirit. In fact, Paul makes a big issue of that. He said the Holy Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Now listen to me. Raised him from the dead and now lives inside your body. In, inside your mortal body, he brings eternal life. Think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a moment. The Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead the moment you believe the gospel of Christ that he died on a cross for your sins was buried on the third day raised from the dead. The moment you believe that, the Holy Spirit, third member of the Godhead, takes up residence inside your mortal body and brings eternal life. Your, the Holy Spirit becomes that artesian well within sight of, this, of God. That's a marvelous idea. And so Jesus talked about it. It was prophetic in Psalm 16:10 on your paper. In Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 7, Paul, Paul talks about the abyss. The abyss. In Ephesians 4, 9, Sheol was called the lower, lower part of the earth. This is where Jesus went, in the lower part of the earth. In Philippians 2.10, it's called underneath the earth. He's talking about the earth on which we stand, down in the heart of it. You see, there are five references connected with the resurrection of Jesus Christ about his burial. One of them, five references comes from our passage, Matthew, the 12th chapter, verse 40. <clears throat> Is that a big deal? It was a big deal to Jesus. It was a big deal to Jesus. Therefore, it's a big deal to Ron Adamon. 
and hopefully it'll be a big deal to you. The lesson today, in the first hour, I'm going to deal with three ideas. Three, three, and I'm going to look at my passage with three homiletical points. The miraculous sign. They said, show us a miraculous sign. Listen, he has already raised the dead, healed the blind, the lepers. The, he has kicked out demons. He's done every possible thing that you could imagine. And it's not enough. Listen, it is never enough until you come to face the need of salvation. You can never get enough information until you come, because it's all gobbledygook information. Until you come to faith that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised, and you believe that, you can never get enough information. Show us more. Show us more. More than what? I mean, how many miracles do you need? Well, we need something bigger and that See, everybody wants that, bigger and better. Then I'll believe. Mm -mm. It isn't about that. And so he says, what's it about? I'm going to die on a cross. I'm going to be buried three days and three nights. And listen, I don't know. But he's probably saying, how many days? Three. How did I describe them? Day and night. Three days and nights. Okay, count with me. Now, I'm not asking you to do it. I'm thinking, he says, okay, count with me. Day one and night. Day two and night. Day three, day and night. You understand? In fact, they quote this back in his trials at the crucifixion. They quote that stuff back. Oh, the, here is the guy who said that he was going to be raised in three days. I mean, before they left, he said, now, did you get it? Okay, let's see. Give me a, give me a one. <laughs> give me a two. <laughs> give me a three. <laughs> they got it. The only people that don't get it, the people who don't pay any attention to it. They got it. Now, whether they believed it or not, I don't know, because the miracle is not what you believe in. It's the one who performs it. What do I know? I know God didn't think enough did because he, he, he crunched them in 70 A.D. That's for sure. What's it matter? Well, I'll tell you why it matters. I'll tell you another reason it matters to me. Because when you die, you don't go down. Everybody else that dies goes down except you, a church-age believer, and the only reason you go up is because he went up. When you die, absent from the body, so present with the Lord. When, when Abraham died, when everybody else died in the Old Testament, they went to Sheol and they waited for the Lord to come. You and I, when we die, 2 Corinthians 5, 6 through 8, we go up into the very presence of the Lord. I go to prepare a place for you, John 14. The second thing, in, in 40, he lays out the, the, the Messiah sign. The Son of Man will, be, will die on a cross, be buried, and be raised from the dead. He'll be, he'll be buried, and he will be raised. Count them, one, two, and three. Right? He counted it, one, two, three. I die on a cross, then count one, two, three, and you're going to have the resurrection. I'm going to die on a cross, and then you're going to count one, two, three. You're not going to count me dying on the cross. You're going to count me after I die on the cross. One, two, three. <laughs> and the men in Nineveh, they're going to be a sign. You're not going to like this sign, they said. The men of Nineveh <laughs> are going to stand in judgment over you because they repented. They changed their mind about the source of their salvation and believed. And was set in judgment over you. Oh, boy, they, you think that didn't rile them up? Can you imagine? Can you imagine going into Israel and preaching that the Arabs that believe in Christ are going to set in judgment over you people? Well, you got a picture now. 
In John 14, in 1, 14 and 18, Jesus says, listen, this is important. The word became flesh. What, what became flesh? It says the word. You want to know who this special person in the human race is? What is special about this man called Jesus of Nazareth? What's special about him? He was born of the word of God. Think about that. In other words, you want to know, listen, you want to know everything you want to know about Jesus, then go to the word of God, because that's who he is. From start to finish, he, his job was to fulfill the word of God. Our responsibility is to take that serious, in my opinion. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory. The glory is the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. I loved how Jesus closed His sermon with this group of people when He said, A greater than Jonah is here. I don't know if you believe that today. I don't know. I spent... 21 years of my life not believing it. If I'd have went to church like you're going to church, and I didn't, but if I would have, as a young person, say nobody in here is under high school age. Maybe I'd have sat in the pew and not got any more out of this than you are. I don't know. But I tell you, when I go to church now, it's not that way. When I go to church, after I got born again, when I went to church, they couldn't give me enough. They couldn't teach me enough. If they'd have said, we're going to be at church all day, I'd have been there all day. I was so hungry for the word of God, like a newborn babe desires to sin. So oh, listen, my appetite for the word of God has only grown. It's not got weaker. It's got not got less. I'm more hungry for the word of God today than I've ever been in my life. Because you know why? Because I discovered in my Christian life as a believer in Jesus Christ, the gospel, I found that the truth of the word of God in my soul, functioning in my soul, sets me free from the cosmic system of lies. I don't get mad at the guy in television that don't know better. I get mad at myself for not making sure that he knows better. I think, what can I do to help him understand the truth? Because... That's, that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. What can I do, Father? What can I do to help that person come to the truth? You couldn't get me to announce that. Listen, you couldn't pay me enough money to put me on channel six, six or seven, eight, whatever they are, and then lie. There's no way I could do that. I'd go like, listen, I can announce that, but I got to tell you the truth. There's no such thing as Good Friday. I mean, every, every day is a good one if you're going to take that opinion, but Jesus didn't die on Friday. There's no way. You're going to walk, you couldn't buy me. Three days and three nights is a, way, is a way of expressing three complete days. That's how you do it. Recently, I had a family, kid people of mine, Come through town, headed to Florida. Back in the winter, by the way. They're headed back the other way now. <clears throat> they call me up and say, hey, can I stop off at your place and visit with your family? Because we, we have a lot of fun together when we get together as family. They, when they come down, we do what we normally do. We go have fun as a family. They don't have that. So when they come down and we pull everybody together and we just we are just the eight of us, we just go have fun. They like go nuts. This is like going to Disney World. But you know what they always do? They always tell me how many days and nights are going to stay. I'll be in at about four. I'd like to stay, that would be on Thursday, Ron, and then I would like to stay Friday, and I want to leave on Saturday. See, I know how to figure that out. I'm so smart. I could actually figure that out. Listen, 
Ben, who is four, could figure that out. My grandson, who's four. Oh, I know he's a whiz bang, you know. Oh, you have a four year old, oh, that's normal. Oh, I didn't know that. Even Ben could figure that out. Oh, they're coming in on Thursday, leaving. Oh, they're going to spend, they're going to spend, oh, on one night, two nights. Oh, I got that, and they're going to leave. See, one, two. Uh, why we can't count to three, I don't know. Have we gone that far nuts in America that we can't count one, two, three? Apparently. Apparently, that's happened to us. For example, if Christ died on Friday, it wasn't counted as burial. It was counted as death. John 20. After Jesus was officially declared dead, at the end of the day, then he was buried. And the reason that they buried him quickly is because it was about to become the 15th of Nisan, which was a high Sabbath. The 15th of Nisan began the, the celebration of unleavened bread. The Passover meal was on the 14th of Nisan. It was never, it never a day. It was always a date like Christmas. And then you the 15th, the 15th was a high Sabbath. It was considered just like a weekly Sabbath. It was a high Sabbath. And seven days later of the unleavened bread was the 21st. It was a high Sabbath. They're called Sabbaths. You need to understand that stuff. John 20, 31, the Jews, therefore, because it was the day of preparation. You know what they're prepared for? The celebration of un unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Often that eight-day festival was called Passover. In the scripture, sometimes they call that whole eight-day ceremony Passover. Sometimes they call that whole eight-day ceremony unleavened bread. The truth of the matter is, there are four of seven national holidays. Four of them were connected with the crucifixion, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Passover, unleavened bread. In the middle of unleavened bread was first fruits, and first fruits took you to Pentecost. These four, first advent was fulfilled by Jesus Christ. It's, it's an amazing thing when you study the scriptures. The Jews, therefore, because it was the day of preparation, that's the 14th of Niacin, getting ready for the 15th, so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day. What they're calling the Sabbath on the Sabbath, they're not talking about Saturday. They're talking about the 15th was a, was a high Sabbath, the first day of unleavened bread. Listen, I put it on your paper somewhere, Leviticus. You need to study Leviticus the 23rd chapter, somewhere from about, not now, but later from about verse, all four of these are there, somewhere about four to nine or something. You need to, you need to take a look at that. That's really important. Listen, it was on Sunday that they discovered he was raised. When, when is he going to die? Well, if you count back, you count your three days, he's going to die on Wednesday. He's going to be buried Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's, uh, when they come to Sunday morning, he's gone. They call it the sunrise service. He was already gone. You know what they come to the, the grave to see? Empty. It was empty. Before dawn, it was empty. <clears throat> That's important. Um, always remember, 14th of Niacin is Passover. That's an official Passover ceremony. That, that Jesus did the upper room. Then you got 15 through 21. 15th is a high Sabbath. The 21st is a high Sabbath. John 19, 31 tells you that. In that week of unleavened bread, there's going to be a weekly Sabbath. You know, like, because there's seven days. You're going to have a weekly Sabbath. 
the day after the weekly Sabbath of unleavened bread, this is all in Leviticus 23, is called first fruits. That's why Jesus is the first fruits of the resurrection. You count 50 days or seven complete Sabbaths weeks, seven complete Sabbath weeks, and if the then you have Pentecost, which is called the 50th day. <clears throat> Everything has to run on schedule. Everything, uh, therefore, I, there's a correction I need to have you make under point two when it, it's a scripture, John, I forget what I had on there, but it should be John 19, 41. Therefore, because the Jewish day was a Passover, uh, was a preparation, since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. The day, what they're shooting for, the high Sabbath is the 15th, first day of unleavened bread. Four of the seven national shadow Christology Jewish holidays are connected to the to Jesus' death, burial, resurrection. And then the final one comes with the ascension. 50 days out is the ascension. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits of Passover. And then Pentecost, when Pentecost comes, it's a one-day deal, just like Passover. Passover is one day. Then you have the seven days of unleavened bread, 50 days down after first fruits, which comes after the first Week of, right? First weekly Sabbath in that seven-day festival, right? Of unleavened bread. You count 50 off, and that day is Pentecost. Seven complete Sabbath weeks, and then you have Pentecost. And Christ will be seated at the right hand of God the Father when that happens, because he makes it happen. And now he fulfills, he fulfills the Passover. Listen, 1 Corinthians 5, 7, Jesus said, I am the Passover lamb. First, listen, John 129, behold the Lamb of God that's come away to take, take away the sin of the world. J First Peter 118, the precious blood as a lamb, unblemished and spotless. That's without any growth defects, birth defects. Second, First Peter 224, <clears throat> he's going to bear our sins on his body on the cross. <clears throat> All of those are significant and important to us. Listen, you can have what you want to have, but listen, you ought to want to know what the Bible says. All of this is documented out of Leviticus 23, where the seven holidays are mentioned, and they're listed. You can go from Passover to unleavened bread to first fruits to Pentecost. You can read them all. You can study it all out on your own. I'm just telling you, I'm just giving you a cliff note version. And you should study them. You should know what the scriptures say about this subject matter. Why? Because it involves the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it mattered to Jesus that you have it correct. Here's my final point. The gospel of Jesus Christ consists of three things that every person must believe to receive grace salvation. you got to believe in his death, his burial, and resurrection. If there's no death, there's no burial. If there's no burial, there's no resurrection. But if there is a death, there will be a burial, there will be a resurrection. It's upon that that you're saved. F 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 tells you this is the gospel. According to the scriptures... Christ died for your sins, was buried, and raised from the dead the third day. Now, we understand when the writers are talking about the third day, that's based on the teachings of Jesus that took his proof text from Jonah 117. Let me tell you, for example, when I was in my theological training, I had a professor in doctrines, that told me earlier in, my, in the semester that he thought that the whole story of Jonah was a myth. Then we come over to this theological issue over here on why 
Who was Jesus? Why did he come into the world? And what did he accomplish that is so important to you and I? I was one of those dumb guys in class because I lifted my hand. And I said to them, I have a problem. What is that, Ron? I said, you told me this earlier in the semester, and I wrote it down, that you thought that Jonah was a myth. Yes? Well, the resurrection of Jesus Christ is based completely on the truth of that story. Are you saying that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is a myth? Because I need to know that. You know, for me, I wasn't spending any more money. I'm not going to spend hard-earned money to get an education on lies. You can't say that this is out and this is in. Because Jesus used his proof tech just as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the whale or sea monster, so shall the Son of Man be. I said, you know, I'm confused. Is this in or out? Because if one's out, the other's out. How do you declare it? <clears throat> you see, listen to me. Because it matters to me what I believe, because what I believe matters to how I move my life forward. Now, I don't care what degrees these people have. They must have had the same professor I had. If Jonah's a myth, so is, the, so is the other, because he based his, his whole proof text of three days and three nights in, in the burial was based on Jonah. You know, you used to have a... Higher education shouldn't lead, lead you to lower intelligence. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ... The Passover holiday was 14th of Niacin, Wednesday, like Christmas. It didn't occur on a day. It, cre it always was a date. It was called the day of preparation for the Feast of Unleavened Bread. What was the big one? It was seven days. It began on the 15th and closed out on the 21st, and both the opening and the end was a high Sabbath. On the cross, Jesus died, the Passover lamb of God, as I stated earlier, based on Exodus 12. He is buried, he is buried Thursday, Friday, Saturday, which is the first three days in this time of unleavened bread. That's 15, 16, and 17. 15, 16, and 17. We know he's going to be raised from the dead. Nobody disputes it was Sunday, right? He was out of the grave by Sunday. Everybody agrees that. Even those who don't understand the whole deal believe that. But you've got to have three days and three nights. You've got to have three days and three nights. You've got to have three days and three nights. So you've got to have Thursday, Friday, Saturday with two high Sabbaths on the 15th and 21st. And the, the 15th, 16th, and 17th are the three days he's in Sheol. I, I want to show you something. Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 14. You know, please always check my numbers, right? Always check my numbers. It, it won't be a problem with you when you start looking mine up and you can't find it. First thing you do is look around it. And the second thing you do is see if I've swapped swap the numbers. I have that. Um, what do you do when you swap? It's too long a word. It's too big. That's not really what I have. I don't know what I have. <clears throat> I know I don't have that, though. It's too big a word. Listen, it's a messianic. I, I'm at Isaiah 14.9. I'm sorry. It was on your paper. 
Sheol from beneath is excited over you to meet you when you come. That's, that's a Messianic passage. It arouses for you the spirits of the dead, all the leaders of the earth. It raises all the kingdoms of the nations from their thrones. How about that? I mean, he says to the thief on the cross, I'll see you later in the day. We'll have coffee. You now have coffee with Abraham. No, I don't, he didn't really say that part. Today you will be with me in paradise, is what he said. Paradise, Abraham's bosom. Like Luke 16. Three days, then the resurrection, the day after the weekly Sabbath. Always remember that the day after the weekly Sabbath, he's in there Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That Saturday, the last day, Saturday is the weekly Sabbath. On the first, the very next day of the unleavened bread after the weekly Sabbath is called first fruits out of Leviticus 23. And then from there, you count 50 days down and you got Pentecost. Leviticus 23. And so he's out, declared raised from the dead on the 18th of Niacin. Sylvia Dennis knew that I loved any theology written in the 1800s. You know how hard that is to find? But I'm telling you, you want to read some great theology, you read these pastors that wrote theology out of the 1800s in America or, or anywhere. I discovered that when I was going through school, and so I began to, every time I could get my hands on anything, and so one day I just happened to be talking with Bill and Sylvia, and I said, because she was always out hunting bookstores. I said to her, so I knew if anybody could find it, she'd find it. I said, if you ever find anything written by anybody theologically out of the 1800s, I want that. If, if it's affordable, I'll take it, what, any kind of condition. So I got books in there that, you know, <laughs> all fall apart and all that. They, they, but great theology. She came back with a nugget for me. I wrote this down. She found a book called Biblical Chronology and the Jewish Calendar by a Reverend H.T. Bess. This guy, boy, you talk about nerdy. He wrote this little dinky book and wrote every concept of calendars that you could imagine from the beginning of time. He studied every calendar you can imagine. And as a Christian, he was concerned about the very subject I'm talking to you about. So he gathered all of the research you could of every calendar system of the ancient world and coded them out. I mean, it just, I, I read it, my eyes fall back on my head. But there's a chapter what he was after because it, the, the whole death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ has to line up with the word of God. And so he looked to see if that, how that worked out in history. He narrowed it down. He took 30 AD as a starting point, went five years on each side, would, would you agree that would be safe? Not one time, not one reference is there a Friday. You know what he did? He did discover. He discovered April the 6th, 30 AD, the 15th of Niacin was a Thursday. There's the first day of the burial of Jesus Christ was his conclusion. 
He ran all of the numbers. He was a numbers guy. Ran all the numbers down. And on April the 6th, in 30 AD, you have what was called Passover, which is that eight-day festival. You have the 15th, which is the day of the burial. That's the beginning of unleavened bread, and it's right into the scriptures. What I thought was interesting is April the 6th. I mean, he had it down to April. The 6th. Most of us can only get it down into a year. But he went five years on each side of 30. Not one time. Not one time did you have a Friday. Not one time. So let's have, let's close in a word of prayer. What's it matter, Ron? Listen, I understand you don't have to believe all said today to get saved. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You don't have to know all this information, but you do have to believe that he died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day. You believe that you're saved. So what's it matter, Ron? Well, it matters because you need to be accurate in the scriptures when you start declaring what days, what's, what days that things are happening. Okay? Nobody sat down and had to explain to me all of that I explained to you today in order for me to be saved. I was saved because I believe he died for my sins, was buried and raised from the dead on the third day. I mean, I believe that. I'm teaching the church. I'm offering salvation to those who want to be saved today. If you're here today and you've never, listen, it's not about going to church to get you saved. It's you got to believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead third day. You, you believe that, you get saved. Whenever you believe it, you get saved. What I'm teaching you today is what Jesus taught the people about being correct. I mean, it's about his burial. Let us pray. Father, we're so thankful today for these to come our way. We pray we've made some clarity with Christians about this for the unbelief that is visiting with us. Listen. You're going to have to believe that Jesus died for your sins, be buried if you want to go to heaven. You, that's, you got to believe it. I mean, I, I, there's no shortcut about this. It's not about how religious you are, not what a good man you are, a good woman. It's whether you believe that Jesus paid the ultimate price for your redemption. Paid the price so that you wouldn't have to. So, so you, could, you and I could be saved by grace through faith and not of herself. It is a gift of God, not of works. The boast goes to the Father. It doesn't go to us. We're thankful for that. Father, the offering that's taken today, we pray we would be great stewards of it and spend it on reaching the most people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. For we've made our prayer in his name. Amen.